Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Before we get going, I wanted to draw your attention to Nancy's book, Learning Contentment. We tend to think being stressed out is a normal state of affairs, and that contentment means sitting back and just bottling things up. For the Christian, however, contentment is something we must apply, work at, and make our own in every circumstance, because anxiety and frustration are not neutral behaviors. In Learning Contentment, Nancy Wilson looks to the Bible and Puritans like Jeremiah Burroughs, Samuel Rutherford, Thomas Watson, and Charles Spurgeon to help us develop the practical, spiritual strength and the perspective that comes from contentment's deep satisfaction with the will of God. Learning Contentment includes concise explanations, application questions, and assignments that will involve and challenge everyone, and lots of biblical wisdom for individuals and groups. Well, hello, ladies. Welcome to the Femina Podcast. I'm Nancy Wilson. Today, I'm going to start on the topic of our heart, and I may need to spend at least a couple of podcasts on this because it is a big subject. And of course, first of all, the Bible has a lot to say about the general state of our hearts, so I'm just going to pick a few verses to illustrate where we are without Christ, first of all. Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. So notice our maker, he searches. He searches the heart, everyone's hearts. There's no hiding anything from God. He obviously knows our hearts far, far better than we do. And if our hearts are deceitful, this explains a lot, doesn't it? It even explains self-deception. This is how people can be self-deceived because our hearts are deceitful. So even for the Christian woman who has a new heart, and we'll get to that in a minute, but we're still susceptible. We have to be very wise when it comes to our own hearts. Samuel Rutherford said, Your heart is not the compass Christ saileth by. And oh my goodness, that just let that sink in for a minute. Your heart is not what God consults before he makes his judgments. <laughs> you think? Um, your heart is not the compass Christ saileth by. And our hearts really shouldn't be our own compasses either. If you follow your own heart, you are not wise. And But we want to. I want to, our heart says to us. I want to follow my heart. You're not wise if you follow your heart. Don't trust your heart. We have to trust something outside ourselves, and that something is our maker, God Almighty. We trust him. He searches our hearts, and he says our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. He is the one who can search them. And Jesus says in Matthew 15, 18, and 19, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. So, so far, the word tells us our hearts are deceitful, wicked, evil, where all the sin begins. And so obviously this is all bad news. It's not complimentary. And I'm going to talk in a minute about how our mouths are connected to our hearts. But we see that here. Uh, Those things which proceed out of the mouth, they come from our hearts. And our hearts are the source of all the bad. Well, all the bad, ladies, comes from our hearts. All right. Um, In 1 Samuel 16, 7, For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So we can't understand our own hearts. We can't understand the hearts of other people, but God sees them and he sees all the things in them, all of our little pet attitudes, the self-love, the vanity, the pride. The Lord looks at the heart. And 
in the Gospel of Matthew, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. May this not be said of us, right? We want to honor God with our lips and our, we want our hearts to be close to him, not far from him. We obviously tend to judge people by how they look, by their outward appearance or what they say, you know, their actions, uh, their words. But we are not in a position to judge people by their motives or attitudes because only God can truly see those motives and attitudes. That doesn't mean we won't try to attribute motives and attitudes, but we should be aware of doing that. So we judge people by how they look, and we can obviously be very wrong about it. And, but God is not limited in the same way. He looks straight in at our hearts, and he sees it all. And so there's no hiding anything from him or pretending when it comes to our creator. We can't tell him, but I really had good intentions. <laughs> well, we may be self-deceived in thinking we had good intentions, or maybe we, we did, but ha, huh, he sees through all of that, and good intentions are not enough, are they? Proverbs twenty seven nineteen says, as in water, face reflects face, so a man's heart reveals the man. So the heart is where the action is. And, and all of this sounds like bad news, but it really should be a comfort to us believers because we want God to change our hearts. We, want, uh, we can thank him for the new heart that he has given us, but it should comfort us that he knows all of our inward thoughts uh, Psalm 139, 1 and 2, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. This should be a comfort to the believer and not intimidating because we want God to change our hearts. We want him to reveal sin so we can repent. If it doesn't comfort us, then I think that's a bad sign <laughs> that we're trying to keep something back from him. But the thought that he knows us completely and searches us should be, for the believer, a source of real comfort and peace in knowing that our good God sees, sees it all. So the good news is that he's given us a new heart. In Jeremiah 24, 7, it says, Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. So. If we are in Christ, we do have a new heart, but these hearts need to be diligently stewarded, right? Or shepherded is maybe a better word. We have to be aware of the state of our hearts and ask God to be showing us where if we're not serving him or returning to him with our whole heart, we want our whole hearts to be given over entirely to God, holding back nothing. We are his people. We want to be his people entirely, not half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly. So not half Christians, whole Christians. Deuteronomy 6, 5 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So you see why I was thinking it would be interesting to talk for a week or two about our hearts, because the scripture is so saturated with references to our hearts. And this one, we're to love God with all of our heart. Back to the wholeheartedly, we are to give him all of our heart. Uh, Romans 10, 9, 10, 8, and 9 says, The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's our good news, isn't it? Uh, his word is in our mouth. It is in our heart. We believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. There's that connection to the, the heart and the mouth. And then we'll be saved. We believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. With, we believe it with all our heart and we're going to be saved. And so this new heart of ours, it's the seat of all of our beliefs and our affections. But those beliefs and affections have been raised from the grave. They're new beliefs and new affections. The old heart had all of its sin and confusion 
and lies and so forth. But a new heart is a seed of our beliefs and affections, and they've been raised from the grave. So even with that new wonderful heart that we have been given, for which we are very grateful, we can't put our trust there. Our trust has to be solidly grounded in the Lord, in something, someone outside ourselves. And that's why we see our world in such chaos and craziness, because they have put their trust in their feelings and their beliefs and their emotions and their hearts, but their hearts are deceived. And so there's so much chaos and instability. But with our new heart, when we look to Christ, he is stable. He is the rock. And if our trust is solidly grounded there, then we are not so easily confused or not so easily made to be fearful because we are standing on this rock. We have a new heart in Christ. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So if our feelings are our treasure, then that's where our heart is. We're just chasing after our feelings. If we are treasuring up all of our relationships, then that's where our treasure is. And relationships are not always stable, are they? And they are, of course, our relationships, as dear and precious as they are to us, they are not to be our, our guiding force. <laughs> we want Christ to be our treasure. We want our treasure to be in heaven. And then we have stability and we have peace and we have a consistent understanding, biblical understanding of what God is calling us to do. So where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. P.S. Your own heart is not your treasure, okay? <laughs> We're to be heavily investing in our account in heaven. And that's where our heart is, where our Savior is, and he's in heaven. So I hope you're following me here with all this heart business. Our hearts are not our treasure. Christ is our treasure. We are to have our treasure in heaven. And that's where our heart is, where Christ is. And he said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So Christ is lowly, humble in heart. Just the fact that he loves and cares for us, what great humility and kindness he has. So we take his yoke, we learn from him, he's gentle and lowly, we follow him and we follow rest for our souls. We find, not follow, we find rest for our souls. And I want to just return uh, for a minute to, to what I said early on about your heart is not the compass Christ saileth by. When we consider our lives and the direction we're going and all the choices before us and the decisions we have to make, Sometimes our hearts will obviously lean in one way or the other, but often it's based on circumstances, it's based on opportunities and feelings, and we just have a hunch or we have an intuition that this is the right thing to do. We have to be led by the Lord. We have to saturate things in prayer and to be constantly going to Him, our compass, for our guidance and our deliverance. We want the Lord to be our counselor. And so my suggestion to you, just uh, as you contemplate these things about our hearts, is pay attention to how often you're really consulting <laughs> your heart. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and your heart says, this is going to just be a blue day. I think today it's gray and rainy. Let's just have this be a blue day in which we, we just feel a little down. How about that? Um, that's the point where we have to say, you're not my compass. I don't get my directions from my feelings. And sometimes we have to say to our feelings or our heart, um, we have a lot to do today. There's a lot on my plate. You're going to have to come along quietly, feelings, because God has given me a lot of good things to do this day, and I'm going to do them with a cheerful heart. And I'm, even if you have to drag along behind me, I'm not paying attention to you. I'm not getting my signals from you. 
I'm taking my signals from the Lord. And God is seeing your heart, and he's seeing you uh, get your heart in line. And I love that image. Like, you come along quietly. It's like, kind of like a toddler who is saying, no, I won't. I won't go. I won't eat my spinach. And, and we just have to say to our hearts, come along quietly. You're not in charge. And, of course, we have to do this by the grace of God and say, Lord, give me strength over my own heart. Help me not to be getting all of my direction from my feelings today, but doing what you've called me to do and keeping my eyes on you and not looking in. So pay attention to some of these things today as you're going through your day. Don't follow your own heart. Be rather wise. Draw near to God with your whole heart and he will bless you. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.